Today, we are diving into the world of invertebrates. How can we tell the difference between groups of invertebrates? Organisms are sorted into groups based on their similarities in a process scientists call classification. Classification helps scientists better understand the tree of life. Think of classification as an inverted pyramid with seven categories. Kingdom is the largest and most broad category. You may have heard of the animal kingdom. That's a great example and includes every single animal on earth. Moving down the pyramid, the categories start to become more specific, eventually ending at the species level. Scientific names of organisms, usually in Latin or Greek, are the combination of the genus and species names. For example, Homo sapiens, commonly known as humans. We will be exploring three different phyla of invertebrates within the animal kingdom that we commonly see in the Tampa Bay estuary, Phylum mollusca, Phylum arthropoda, and Phylum echinodermata. Let's get started. Hi guys, it's Jordan, and I'm here to talk to you about a group of invertebrates called echinoderms. Now, echinoderms are cool animals that are characterized by their unique skin. Echino means spiny and derm means skin. Now there are um, nearly 7,000 individual species of echinoderms and they are found in exclusively marine environments. So they're found in estuaries and oceans across the world. The phylum Echinodermata contains five classes of marine life. Our starfish or sea stars, sea lilies and feather stars, sea urchins and sand dollars, sea cucumbers, and our basket and brittle stars are characterized by a few different things, including, of course, their spiny skin. They actually also have what we call um, radial symmetry, which basically just describes their shape. They all come to a common point. Um, they also all have an internal shell, which is made out of calcium. It's their internal skeleton. And they have a unique system called a water vascular system, which basically uses water pressure for locomotion, for eating, and for things like respiration. Now let's take a look at some of the common species of echinoderms found in the Tampa Bay estuary. The brown spiny sea star is a common species in the bay and across the Gulf of Mexico. This species of sea star has five arms and can reach up to five inches in diameter. Like all sea stars, brown spiny sea stars exhibit radial symmetry, which means that their components are arranged around a central axis in a symmetrical manner. This means that an echinoderm has no obvious left and right, only a top and a bottom side. The brown spiny sea star gets its name from its bumpy texture, a perfect example of the spiny skin of an echinoderm. stars comprise the largest class of echinodermata with nearly 1,600 different species. Another Tampa Bay inhabitant is the banded sea star. The banded sea star is named for its sometimes bold black bands down each arm. This species can reach up to 15 inches in diameter. Echinoderms like sea stars have hundreds of tube feet down each arm, which are tentacle-like structures with suction cups on each end. The tube feet of this banded sea star gives it its bright orange coloration on its underside. These tube feet are hydraulically controlled by a remarkable vascular system. Echinoderms pump water into their bodies and fill their tube feet. They are then able to extend and retract their tube feet, allowing them to hold onto substrate, move along a surface, and hold onto and manipulate prey. Here, the banded sea star is demonstrating the use of its tube feet to bury itself into the sand. Brittle stars are similar to sea stars, but have long, thin, flexible arms. Their long arms are often forked and spiny. Instead of crawling on hundreds of tube feet like starfish, brittle stars move fairly rapidly by wiggling their arms, as exhibited by this reticulated brittle star. These agile arms are supported by an internal skeleton of calcium carbonate plates called ossicles. The arms of brittle stars are very fragile and readily break off, but can quickly regenerate or regrow. This is true for sea stars as well. The reticulated brittle star is commonly found in Tampa Bay, but typically hides under rocks or in crevices during the day and emerges only at night to feed.
As mentioned, echinoderms are supported by a rigid skeleton called a test, which is made up of interlocking plates of calcium carbonate. Each test is unique to a given species of echinoderm, and their mouths are located on the bottom of the animal. Sea urchins have five tooth-like plates called the Aristotle's lantern, surrounding its mouth on the underside of its test. An urchin uses its teeth to scrape away algae from rocks and create depressions in the rock surfaces to seek shelter. The species of sea urchin commonly found in our waters is known as the variegated sea urchin. Their coloration and spines are variable. Variegated sea urchins cover themselves with plant and shell debris, holding the material in place with their two feet. Some scientists hypothesize that urchins do this to protect themselves from predators. It is more likely that the covering behavior is a response to increased light levels, suggesting that the collected debris acts to shade the animal from strong light. Sand dollars actually belong to the same group as sea urchins. They are basically just a flattened version of one. They are a burrowing species that can be found just offshore in sandy bottom habitats. Oftentimes, the test of a sand dollar can be found washed ashore. If a sand dollar is found and it appears white in color, it is likely just a remaining test. If the specimen has any color, often brown, tan, or purple, that is a living animal and it is important to be sure that it is returned to the ocean. Like many other animals, echinoderms serve a very important role in their ecosystem. They are a very common and important food source, and they have been found to control um, algae growth, which is really important. Some even consider them a keystone species because there are so many other species that rely on them. They're even found to be used in medicine and scientific research. So the next time you find maybe a um, sea star or a sand dollar, take some time to appreciate it and then make sure you leave it right where you found it. As always, thank you for joining us today. Feel free to check out our website for other really cool videos. Thank you so much for your support. Your donations really do go a long way and help us to save the bay every day. Until next time.